<laughs> okay, we're live. We're here. We're at the one o'clock rock. Well, a little after one o'clock rock. Whatever. <laughs> uh, here on Think Tech, and the name of this show is Hawaii, the state of clean energy. And the name of our episode is uh, Electric Vehicles in America. And we got a real authority on that. You know, this is Ed Kemper. He's a Originally an attorney, still an attorney. Still you know, once an attorney, always an attorney. Still you trying know. to practice. Still <laughs> trying to get it down. <laughs> but more than that, uh, he he has created and is doing now for years and years Island Driver TV on OC16, and he's been writing about uh, cars, including electric cars, and the Star Advertiser every Friday. So you want to know more? Um, check him out on uh, OC16 or in the Star Advertiser. Welcome Thank to you. the show. Thank you. Great to have you here. Good to be here. So, uh, you know, we talk about electric cars all the time because it's part of multimodal transportation. It's part of the future of Hawaii, at least according to everyone involved in clean energy, because it, it is clean. Right. Um, and not to say that the source has to be clean, uh, but one day if the source is clean, the whole continuum is clean. Correct. So we're interested in electric vehicles. So <clears throat> you follow cars. I know you do. You love cars. Yes. It's boys, boys toys kind of thing. I know it right. is. I know, right. I know your secret. Um, and so I'd like to know what's on the market now that's worth talking about in terms of electric cars. Cars that are available to me that I might actually consider buying and, and using and incorporating into my life. Well, let's, let's go through a little history. Uh, we have various vehicles that are on the road now that started as hybrids. Now, to understand a hybrid, it's essentially we have some batteries and we have a gasoline motor. Uh, if it's fully charged, then you go along at a, usually at a modest pace with electricity. And then the elect uh, gas motor cuts on when you need it. So that resulted in gas mileage in the 40 to 50 mile per gallon range. Uh, everybody knows about the various Toyota Priuses, and there's quite a few different models of those that have been around for quite a few Popular years. Popular car. Popular car. Um, but here's what's on the horizon for the manufacturers. It's called corporate average fuel economy. It's a federal standard, and by 2025, essentially the mileage you're getting now is going to double. It has to double. And you say, well, how are you going to do that? There's really only two ways, more and more hybrids and more and more electric vehicles. And let me give you the quandary that the manufacturers have. A, a perfect example of this is the best-selling vehicle in the United States is a Ford truck. 150. The 150, the F-150s and the series after that. They sell 70,000 a month, oh, gosh. which is one every, they figured it out, every 32 seconds or something like that, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. <laughs> is this a great country or what? <laughs> really. But here's their problem. The fuel mileage in a typical truck is not very good. And if they're going to get up to where they're talking about at 40 miles per gallon, uh, they have to take some steps to deal with that. Ford has already done that to a degree. They change from steel to an aluminum body. Mm. Save at the car show, yeah. Save 700 pounds, better fuel mileage. Yeah. They go from a V8, which they still have, but also now they're V6s, turbos. Puts out the same horsepower, better gas mileage. Mm -hmm. That'll get you so far. The real answer is Ford is going to have to do more and more electric vehicles to offset the low mileage of the trucks. So when you say average, you mean average among the fleet? Among the fleet. Corporate uh, average. Uh, so Ford Motor Company, which is Ford and Lincoln, overall is going to have to have 40 miles per gallon plus. Mm -hmm. So uh, the way to do that is hybrids, which Ford has, and also electric vehicles. And you say, well, how does that work? The EPA has come up with a way of converting electric vehicle mileage into the equivalent of fuel mileage. So the typical electric vehicle maybe gets 100 miles per gallon, although we're not talking about gallons of fuel, and you offset against the ones that are getting 20 or 30 or whatever, and then you get the average pulled up so you meet the standards. So it's in, a formula. Yes, 20, 25 is when we have to meet this goal. That's nine years away. That is correct. So. Electric vehicles are really the prime answer because their equivalent fuel mileage is in the hundreds, 
105, 107, whatever mm -hmm. the number is. Um, so if you have a Prius, you're probably in the 50s range. There's a plug-in Prius, which means it has more batteries, um, and its range is even further. But the next step, as I said, is pure electric vehicles. There are some halfway steps that have occurred. There's a Chevy Volt, uh, not the Bolt, the Volt. Uh, the, the, the Volt is the older one, and the Bolt is just coming out. Right. So the Volt has a little motor in it and lots of batteries, so it runs on electric power most of the time. When the, the computers sense that I'm, quote, running out of battery power, this little motor comes on and then shoots juice directly into the batteries. So it'll go 45, 50 miles on electricity, and if it says, and you can still drive it all the way across the country without ever trying to charge it because it is a plug-in electric. So next step is going to be uh, from Chevrolet is the Bolt. Now the Bolt uh, has a range, allegedly, of 234 miles That's before cool. you have to recharge it. Very competitive in the marketplace. That, on this island, you could go anywhere. Yeah, no uh, anxiety at no, all. No, none, no anxiety at all. Other manufacturers are doing likewise. Uh, Volkswagen is going to come out with one with that kind of range. Uh, let's take a step back. The Nissan Leaf, which is probably one of the more popular electric vehicles, probably has a range right now of 70 miles or so. Mm -hmm. I should tell a story. I test drove one of them. Yeah. <laughs> I picked it up in Kaneohe. I'm going up over the poly. It started with 64 miles left of range. And as I'm going up the hill, the range is dropping like a rocket downhill because the batteries are, you know, chugging this thing up. I said, uh-oh, am I going to make it home? Go get to the tunnel, start going down the poly because it's a long downhill to town. By the time I got home by punch bowl, I was back to 64 miles <laughs> because when you, you don't even have to press the brake. It recharges just going downhill and not uh, how interesting. Yes. Now, obviously, when I went the other way, it, it, it did sort of the opposite. Yeah, but the net effect on that trip was terrific. Yeah, really. You went up there effectively free. Yeah, you know? that's right. <laughs> um, so anyway, so we're moving to the, the long-range electric vehicles. And we're doing so because technology has changed. The batteries are getting better. Uh, the amount of storage area is not as big as it had, had to be. Now, of course, everybody has to talk about Tesla, of course. And they currently have what I would call high-end electric vehicles. Uh, they start at about $70,000. They have pretty good range. Um, I should tell this story on myself. I <laughs> test drove one of them. And this particular one was the high-end dual motor, all-wheel drive. And you push a button, I think it was called Insane, on the dash. Did you say and Insane? Insane, yes. I thought you said Insane. It is, Insane. Oh, all right. Um, or words to that effect. And then you, and, and the person with me said, put your head back on the headrest. I said, you know, I've driven race cars, I can handle this. Holy moly. You can stomp on the accelerator, because it's all-wheel drive, there's no wheel spin. And in an electric vehicle, the torque is there instantly, yeah. as opposed to a gas engine, which takes time. Yeah. The acceleration was phenomenal. Yeah. 3.2 seconds from zero to 60. <laughs> and now they have one that's even more powerful. Oh my goodness. But you know, $110,000 or whatever yeah, it costs. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's very quiet. Uh, it has a very long range. But now the big one's coming. The so-called Model 3 Tesla. And it has a range of 230 miles, allegedly. It hasn't been built yet. It still looks Tesla, which is different from most cars. And they have 300,000 deposits of $1,000 a piece for just get your name on the list so when they start producing them, um, you'll get one. What does that come to in American money? $300 million. That'll start your car company. Right. right. Well, what Tesla did was they bought the old General Motors Toyota plant in California. Uh, 
that wasn't being used. It was going out of, out of business, essentially. Yeah, yeah. And it's a million square feet or a million two. And I actually asked the Tesla guy, I said, well, I mean, how big is that? He says, well, we can run 5K running races inside the factory. And we still have room. I said, oh, OK. So That's you'll have enough room to build a Model 3. <laughs> yes. So uh, you can see the interest there. And I think it's because, first of all, it sells for $35,000 or maybe $38,000. There's currently a federal tax credit of $7,500. And assuming you have income tax equal to $7,500, you can use that to offset the price. It's, but this is only an offset credit. It's yeah. not a non-refundable, a refundable credit. Like no, it's... You get cash no matter what. Right. So you have to have a certain amount of income paying that amount of tax in order to offset okay. that number. And that's the way it's been. Yeah, yeah right. So... The concern, although among Tesla people, is they're using up the credit already with their more upper-end models. Mm -hmm. And by the time the three comes along, is that credit going to be used up? Because there's a cap on how much it can be so per The manual. number of cars that the manufacturer, manufacturer makes. Manufacturer. Right. right. Uh, now, the Chevy Volt, they don't have that problem because they don't make that general motors doesn't make that many electric vehicles uh, big difference yes because tesla that's all they make yeah and general motors makes everything under the sun yeah. um, and of course the volt chevy volt you get the credit and when the bolt comes out which is pure electric 234 mile range uh, people will be able to take advantage of that and the pricing is roughly the same as the Model 3. Now, I think people will still, I still want it because it has an unusual look to it on the Model 3. It says Tesla, uh, and I think there's a certain cachet. You know, oh, sure. And as opposed to a Chevy, no offense to Cars Chevy. in America and the world, it's all about cachet, isn't That's it? That's right. You know, it's, it's your persona. That's right. <laughs> um, I suspect that the acceleration time in both of these electric vehicles, because they have so many batteries, is going to be quite good. Um, it tends to drop off a little bit as you get into the higher realm, 70, 80 miles an hour, but who cares? Most people don't. No. No. So. Mm -hmm. But let me also say this. In Hawaii, of course, people say, well, most of our electricity, unless you have solar panels, comes from oil. Yes, that's true. But we're stepping in the future where we're going to be less and less dependent upon that. But also look at it this way. You're taking your car to the local gas station to get gas. Think how many steps occurred before you get that gas into your tank. Somewhere, somewhere, there's a big machine pumping the oil out, pumping into trucks or pipes, shipping it to a tanker. Tanker comes here, tanker offloads it to a fuel storage area. It's converted to gasoline. Think how much energy is used in all those steps. Then it's put on another truck, sent to the gas station, and then it has to be pumped out of that into your vehicle. Whereas electricity, the lines are already up. Just plug it in. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a home with solar panels, you're off the grid because you can plug it in at night and... Uh, put that energy back into the vehicle yeah. and off you go. Uh, and for that matter, uh, as you said, when, when we get to the point where we're closing on 100% renewables, um, these cars will all be effectively working on renewables. It'll right. Be a right. great moment. Right. So uh, this has got to change things. I mean, uh, it's interesting that the big manufacturers, I mean, not tes Tesla now, um, they're, they're manufacturing all kinds of cars, sure. and, and they love fossil cars, and they have all kinds of great new technology, which you, which you see on your show and which you examine. And right. I mean, it's really impressive. Um, but in the future, we're going to be talking to electric cars on this. And it just strikes me that Tesla doing, say, 300,000 to start, and then many more than that if it works, which sure. I think it probably will work, um, that's going to change everything, isn't it? Because then the big manufacturers are going to say, gee, we better, we better get well, product up here. They're also being for forced to do that because of the CAF standard. Right, they're right, going to have to do right, it. Right, right. Um, now, admittedly, you know, you have lots of trucks which are designed not necessarily to carry just passengers to and from work. 
and they have to uh, have to have an offset uh, on cars that get very high equ equivalent mileage, as I explained. Yeah. So the, there definitely is going to be a big push to electric and hybrids. Hybrids still have a, a role to play because they can be in the 50s or so in the, in the gas mileage range. When we come back from this break, Ed, I'd like to talk about how it's going to affect not only the marketplace, but our lives and our society here in Hawaii and, uh, and across the country and the world. That's Ed Kemper. Uh, he does uh, Island Driver TV uh, on OC16. He does a, a column in the Star Advertiser all about cars. Uh, here on Hawaii, the state of clean energy. We'll be right back in one minute. You'll see. Aloha, I'm Carl Campagna, host of Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I hope you join us over the next several weeks as we take a deep dive into biofuels in Hawaii and explore the alternative fuels supply chain necessary for the local and global transition towards transportation fuel sustainability. Join us as we have good conversations with our farmers, our producers, our conversion technologies, our investors, and our legislators as we try to achieve our transportation sustainability goals. See you soon. Hello, I'm Marianne Sasaki. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, where some of the most interesting conversations in Honolulu go on. I have a show on Wednesdays from 1 to 2 called Life in the Law, where we discuss legal issues, politics, governmental topics, and a whole host of issues. I hope you'll join me. Okay, we're back. We're live with Ed Kemper, an expert on cars, uh, Island Driver TV and OC16, and a, and a column in the Star Advertiser for years and years. Uh, we're talking about electric cars today, electric cars in America. So you, you examined uh, and told us, uh, which I mean, really a uh, very authoritative discussion about how these cars are evolving right now and why. Uh, but but what's, what's the effect? What's the effect on, in terms of uh, people buying them, uh, of dealers or maybe direct manufacturer type sales happening? What's the effect on, on highways, the effect on our society? I mean, I know a lot of this is speculative, but I'd be really interested in your thoughts about where we're going on this, Ed. Well, interestingly, there was an article in the paper not, not too long ago about, okay, we start shifting to electric vehicles and we're not going to the gas station and pumping gas where there's a tax that the state government gets or the city gets. Interesting point. For roads, how are we going to get the revenue to keep our roads going? Interesting point. So here's their theory. You get your car inspected, Okay, your last inspection showed your mileage was X, let's say 20,000, and now it's 30,000. We're going to assess you a tax based upon the mileage. The, the mileage. And I think that's going to have to happen. It's not unfair. No, I mean, you're using the road, yeah. and here we have proof of it. Yeah. You should pay your fair share to keep that yeah. road. It's like, it's like the tax on trucks on the main. A lot of states have tax on miles that right. trucks oh, travel because, because the, every mile deteriorates the highway. Right. So uh, that's one issue that's certainly going to come up. Um, I think also, and people don't realize this just as a matter of noise, electric vehicles are essentially silent, um, and you don't have that engine exhaust noise potentially from regular vehicles all the time. So we may end up with traffic that's quieter. Admittedly, there's still tire noise in the car traveling through the air, but Overall, as we shift more and more to the electric vehicle, there'll be a somewhat quieter stance. And that's dangerous. Well, not a, I can't hear them coming. That's correct. In parking lots, uh, there's been some talk about having a noisemaker in the vehicle. So at low speeds, it lets you know that the car is present. Um, and actually, I, there was a Kia electric vehicle that had that noisemaker. And it, right. it sounded like a car engine, even though it was electric. <laughs> it's, it's easy to do. It's yeah. not, you know, not expensive. Uh, but but it, you know, this is only low speed stuff. Yeah. Because yes, once right. you get going, then yeah. who sure. cares? Yeah. You don't need the noise. It reminds me when we were kids, we rode our bicycles and the bicycles were, didn't make any noise. Right. So we put a playing card right. on the spokes with a, with a clothespin, made right. it sound like a noisy motorcycle. <laughs> You're a real high tech guy. I can tell that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you heard it here on Think Tech. <laughs> but I think also, 
even though we sort of have this downturn in the solar panel business because of various other features, I think more and more people will say, okay, if I'm going to have an electric car, I might as well have solar power in my home because then I'm really completely off the grid in all, all aspects. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I've, I've noticed a lot of the Tesla people, because they're high-end vehicles, they, they'll have solar panels on their home. They can afford it. It's a high-end family. Yeah, right, that? right. And it pays, it pays itself off. I mean, it isn't as if you're just throwing money against the wall and it falls down and that's it. Eventually, because you're, you're making these savings in your electric bill for both your home and your car, or cars, pays off even quicker. Sure, it's a great connection. But let me ask you this. You know, there's, first, batteries will get better. I mean, it, now, now there's huge pressure to have them get better. And, and in fact, there's a substance called graphene. Graphene is, a, is one layer of carbon atoms. Yeah. And if you layer that up using that graphene layer, um, you can have a battery that's much more efficient than any battery today. Right. And there are thousands of scientists working on this because it's holy grail. I think I've heard about you that. Know, yeah. it, it, it'll happen. It will happen. Right. Um, and it'll change cars. It'll change all these cars we're talking about. But, and so, you know, what's going to happen um, is we're, we're going we're gonna to need less charging because the battery would be more effective. And right. then we have an improvement in the quality, which is also happening, of the solar panels. So maybe you could make a self-fulfilling a self system, a self-supplying system with a flat roof, or relatively speaking, with solar panels on that, high efficiency, high efficiency battery, the whole thing runs without any external force at all. What do you think? Possible. And let me tell you this. Over time, the batteries have gotten better already because the range has already been extended. Uh, and the time to recharge has been cut down. Yeah. Uh, some people fear, oh my gosh, it'll take hours and hours and hours. Well, now, you know, maybe four hours or even less. I mean, and that leaf that I talked about earlier, they have a high energy machine in 30 minutes, 80% charged. Wow. Uh, now, uh, admittedly, you've got to buy this gadget to do it. And it costs some money. Yes, it costs some money. But a lot of people would pay for that. Yep. Because they love their cars and, and they love not having range anxiety and all that stuff. Well, and also, that particular device will become less expensive as they produce more of them and the technology changes. Yeah. Now, Tesla is building a, I don't know how many billion dollar factory in Reno, Nevada. To, uh, <laughs> to build batteries along with Panasonic. Mm -hmm. And that's not only for their vehicles, but also for storage of electricity in homes because we're having this problem in Hawaii already. That is, uh, there's no, you can't get a credit back from the sure. ECHO because... Uh, the termination of the uh, right. net energy metering. Right. Yeah. So people are going to buy storage batteries and they'll be able to store their energy, plug it into their vehicle. Hey, a perfect deal for Tesla because a lot of them are Tesla storage units. All this is connected, you know, the car, the... No the pun intended by that, connected the car and uh, the electricity. No, I didn't mean that, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Works fine. <laughs> I'll take your pun. Okay. Uh, but, you know, connected in the sense that you, you, know, you work on the batteries, you work on the solar, and it helps you not only with the cars, it helps you with your house, and everything sort of connects. But what it really says is that there is technology out there that can disconnect you with the utility and with the grid. You might, I mean, who knows, but in 10 years' time, we might be able to be completely independent. Car, house, only our, our stuff. Well, I think not everybody, because... You, you have know, to afford it. Yeah, and also... You think of condominiums, a lot of them now have no place to plug in your vehicle. That's true. Very expensive to get a, right. a charging station for right. you and your right. vehicle in a condo. Now, there is a mandate. I think if there's an X number of parking stalls, then you have to have so many places where you can charge. Yeah. But for most smaller condominiums, no. Uh, but I think in the future, there may be changes in the law concerning that. Yes. And there may be pressure on condo associations. Hey, hook it up. Or vendors may come along and say, I'll put it in because I want the revenue that's going to result when people plug into this particular system. Yeah, so I'll own it yes. and I'll lease it to you 
right. or I'll charge you on the basis of how much juice th flows through it. Right. So you put your credit card in, it reads it. Well, I, I've done that at the Davies building, right, right down here. They have one. Mm -hmm. And I had an electric vehicle. I said, well, I'm going to try this. So I came in, plugged it in, took my, put my credit card in it. It gave me so many hours of whatever it was. Cool. It wasn't very expensive. That and opens up the, the, the next part of our discussion, Ed, and, and that is, uh, this is going to change the business model. I mean, the business models are changing already. If you look at fossil cars, a few years ago, uh, nobody leased fossil cars. Now, little by little, uh, that's the way they're marketed. I mean, it's extraordinary. You could listen to ad after ad on television. I mean, in the breaks between the debates. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, because that's, that's high advertising revenue right there. Right. And, you know, so you see for every single car, you don't get the price. You get the, the monthly lease payment. That's what you get. It's well, changing. Well, there's, a, there's an advantage to leasing, and that's this. The financing is based upon what the cost of the vehicle is, and its residual value, as opposed to the entire value or entire cost of the vehicle. So your monthly payments are less. And of course, the manufacturers can then say, okay, we're gonna charge zero interest and make those payments even less, uh, which are really, they're subsidizing the price. You say, oh my God, I might as well go buy a new car because, and then at the end of the lease, you have the following options. Give it back to the manufacturer mm -hmm. or the dealer, they take it away, or you can buy it at the residual value and if the value is actually higher in the marketplace, you could then sell it and make a profit. And my partner used to do that with his Ford Ranger trucks. He would, after three years, he would usually find out this truck is more valuable than the residual and he'd sell it. Yeah, make a few bucks. Yeah. But you know, all of this is in play now. And I think as electric cars take more and more of the market, and they will, the next few years because of this uh, 20, 20, 2025 standards uh, right. and other other factors that will attract people even macho people even ford 150 f-150 people uh we're gonna have more on the roads we're gonna have more dealers trying to figure out more ways to get them to us and to change the model about buying them leasing them um you know buying leasing exchanging batteries um, all these things are in play. Sure. It's a great time to be on the road, isn't it? it? We can only benefit by this. Well, it's interesting. We used to call people that worked in the service department mechanics, you know, because they would take them a tool and do whatever. Now they're technicians because <laughs> vehicles are run by computers. And all they do now is they plug it into some big screen thing and it'll tell you what's wrong with it. Um, so. There's where we're going. Yeah. Definitely computerization is taking over not only the vehicle itself, but the repair of it. Uh, and, you know, when you talk about electric vehicles, you have a little dinky motor, maybe yay big and yay long, uh, very simple. Unlike a reciprocating engine that has all these parts going every which way in there, you gotta have oil in there and all that other yeah. stuff. And there's no transmission in electric vehicles. It's just one gear. Simple. Simple. Um, it's the problem and the expense is, of course, the batteries, which are high tech. But as I said, over time, it's going to be less and less expensive. Considering all these things, um, there's your camera over there. Right. Address the people. Tell them what they need to do now. The ones who don't have electric cars. How should they plan? How should they plan their future around cars, given these changes? I think if you have a home, you should investigate solar panels. Uh, not only for your own benefit at home, but also ultimately for your vehicles. Because that way you save lots of money. And even though the electric vehicle may be initially a little more expensive, there's still a federal credit for many of them, uh, you should look at it that way. Now obviously, I think eventually, trucks, minivans, SUVs are going to be more and more either hybrid or electric. So you might as well go down that avenue because that's where we're going absolutely unequivocally. That's where we're going, Ed. Uh -huh. And you know what? I'd like you to come back on from time to time if you can spare time from OC16 and come and tell us how it goes because it's a moving target. Yep. I think we agree. Sure. That's Ed Kemper, uh, uh, Hawaii driver. Island Driver TV and OC16. He writes for the Star Advertiser on cars every Friday. 
and we have been honored to have him here in our show about energy, clean energy in Hawaii. Thank you so much, Ed. Thank you. Hello.